over the longer term, we're now talking months into years, this overexposure of adrenaline and, and more importantly cortisol leads to more extreme health issues. So now you get that feeling where you just can't cope. Things that ordinarily you would have managed now feel overwhelming. Or you're hyper-emotional, something upsetting on television, or you hear a sad story and suddenly you're blubbing really inappropriately. Flying off the handle with things that would normally just not phase you. Classic signs that your adrenals are on the edge. We can even trace back clinical depression to an overexposure of cortisol. It's because we manufacture vast amounts of serotonin, the feel-good brain chemical, in our gut. We make more of it in our gut than we do in our brain. It's not yet fully understood how all that goes on, but the influence of your gut serotonin and your brain serotonin, they're very linked. And so it can lead to clinical depression if you're not making enough serotonin, and you won't be if your digestive system doesn't work well. So, before lunch, where I left off, I had my compress, which I couldn't record. And that was pretty similar to the Maya compress in that I had a warm castor, well, this was castor oil at the Maya, I didn't think they used hay, but they put a castor oil compress on your liver, um, warm it up with a hot water bottle, and then leave you there for that to do its thing. Came out of that and went to a talk with Dr. Stephanie Moore, who's the doc one of the doctors, or one of the two doctors who um, came up with the gut program, and she was talking about how stress affects your body and how stress affects your digestion, saying that there are only two modes, there's either fight or flight or rest and relaxation. So your body only has these two modes. So if you are stressed, there's virtually no point in eating because you're not producing any of the things that your body needs to digest food or to take it in. Sorry, there's a helicopter, so um, yeah, she's not too loud. And um, yes, yeah, so there, there, there's two modes and your body is, is just, it can only do the two wheel, like cavemen and what we're able to do. So I um, learned a lot in that. There are other lessons in there and I'm going to write a post on that because I think it's just absolutely fascinating. Um, then went to a lunch with um, Stephanie and she sort of talked us through what we should be eating, what we shouldn't be eating. Um, most, they don't let vegans on this program. I'm a vegetarian but I and I don't eat fish but I do eat eggs. So on that basis they were like, okay, you can do this provided you're ha willing to have sort of eggs on things. So I had um, eggs and lentils with some raw vegetables and um, oh, what was the other component? They do like activated nuts and things like that. It was really lovely. The food, is, the food is great and I wasn't at all hungry afterwards. In fact, it's quite full by the end of it. So then after that, I went and spoke to Stephanie about my um, body. So they do the body composition, I did that yesterday, but they also do something um, where they take your blood and they check you for triglycerides and um, your cholesterol and things like that. And Fortunately, all of mine came back perfect, like my liver gamma was fine, which means that I'm not drinking too much, um, and all the other things. But they go through that and kind of what you can adapt to make yourself slightly better. So we just did a sort of plan for what I should be eating going forward, which is pretty much what I already am eating, but just with a few little extra bits added in, because the aim is to eat 50, 50 different kinds of food a week, like 50 different foods. So that, you know, asparagus and spinach is not like food groups, it's different foods. Um, because as a Paleolithic man, we would have been eating 150 foods a week and apparently that is what our body likes so 50 foods a week we're trying to incorporate more exciting more variety of foods um, while sticking to the thing that you're meant to do as in like you know a mcdonald's doesn't count as a different food group anyway so i um, was going through that with her and have now come up to the room and i am going to head out now and enjoy the grounds because they are phenomenal so that's the plan for the rest of the afternoon right so this is a library pretty much my dream. Well, I'd love to have a sitting room like this. It's absolutely gorgeous, isn't it? And let me just show you the windows, aside from being gorgeous, have these lovely details at the top, which I think is just the kind of thing that really pleases me because I'm about 900 and interiors really please me. Okay. So, going through so reception would be on your right there's the exit that's the cinema room where you go to lectures and this is the room where the bar basically where you can have snacks well they do a pre-dinner snack there and you can also grab tea and coffee obviously i won't be doing that because i'm never allowed to your coffee again right and then out you go into the garden which is where I'm going to spend the next hour 
So, I better be quiet because there are other guests here. But basically, this is the sort of terrace and you can eat dinner here in the evening because the dining room is just to our left. So back from the pool now where the weather got really grim. Um, well, not really grim, but really cloudy. And now it's really sunny again. So I'm going to get in a walk before food. Um, I'm trying to eat closer to 8 p.m. because they do something here twice a week on the regime where you fast for 16 hours. So you have your dinner at, well, as close to 8 as possible. So I'm going to have mine like at 10 to 8 if I possibly can. And then that's three hours before you go to bed, which is kind of their rule. So I'll be asleep at like 11, which they say is fine. And then... That would take me up to 12, 12.30 for lunch tomorrow. And lunch is served, I think, at 1, but I'll have to hold out till then. Um, so basically, the idea is that you should always have 12 hours between your dinner and your breakfast. Um, but if you can push it into just a plus in that, so like 12, 13, 14 hours, um, twice a week, your body goes into a mode where it heals itself and it's not processing food and it is apparently extremely good for the entire body so that's what I'm aiming to do well that's rather what I'm being told to do and have to do so that's the plan um rabbits are out again I keep trying to catch them but I'll just show you they're everywhere here and then every time I get up my camera they disappear so there you go little bunny rabbits having fun there they are. Okay, so I'm going to head out there now and go for a walk before dinner. The bitters before dinner. So, uh, what is that sauerkraut and kind of, yeah, more fermented food. You're photographing your dinner? I am filming my dinner. <laughs> <laughs> everybody course. knows everybody. Yeah. Rock and tagine. And then on the side I've got a peach salad with, what else is that? I don't even know. Well, there's lettuce there and there's a... Yeah, some sort of lettuce peach salad. So it's my final day here at Grey Shot, which is the third day, would be the third day of the regime, and that's a fast day. So last night we had dinner um, at about 7.38, and then the idea is to not eat for 16 hours. Um, here they recommend, as at the Maya actually, they recommend that you have 12 hours between breakfast, at, sorry, dinner and breakfast as a rule, because that gives your digestive system enough time to rest. Um, and fasting is very good for the digestive system um, in, you know, periods. And the idea also with the whole fasting for 16 hours, sorry, j let me just put this in at the beginning, is that you never do it two days in a row or three days in a row. You're kind of staggering it as with the 5-2 diet. The idea being that then you don't set a lower metabolic rate. Um, so, 16 hour fast, didn't have breakfast, had the most slow morning, did as little as I possibly could because I'm a wake up with a burning, like, I'm so hungry in the morning. I've always been a wake up very hungry kind of person. So I woke up and just sort of walked around, potted around. Actually, the hunger wasn't too bad this morning. I kind of managed to just slowly work my way, you know, or rather not do much through it. Went downstairs to have my final health check. Obviously, if you're here for the regime, you'd be having your final health check after an entire week, in which case the weighing and, you know, the other things in your body might have changed. In mine, like, I think I'd lost, like, 0.1 of a kilo or something. But anyway, you know, I just sort of went and saw the nurse. Um, then after that, went to have a lecture on fats. Now, um, I think I'm going to write a post about this because I don't think I can possibly get it all in here. But effectively... Um, the whole don't eat saturated fats thing is a myth that was cooked up in the 1970s in America. Lots of um, nutritionists, clinical nutritionists, have now come up with plenty of evidence to, to suggest that this was absolute rubbish and that we should be eating good fats. So basically the good fats are extra virgin olive oil, coconut oil for cooking at high temperatures and um, just any other sort of like good quality oils like linseed, um, flax, I think. I think they're the same thing actually. Um, pumpkin oil say uh, you should never be eating vegetable oil or basically anything that will come in a takeaway or a meal the other thing I found interesting is that apparently when you buy dried fruit in a supermarket um, you know and it all separates really like you have raisins and they, they don't stick together it's because they coat each raisin in vegetable oil so they are also really bad for you so trans fats are everywhere they're saying in the supermarket you've got to be so enormously careful to avoid them so I will do a post on that actually and um, what I learned in that. 
But we then had lunch with a nutritionist and I got there thinking, oh, I haven't eaten for 16 hours, I'm gonna starve. And actually, as I was eating, I had my soup and it was like a, um, what was it? I wanna say pumpkin soup, I don't even remember. Anyway, maybe pumpkin soup. God, okay, sorry, pumpkin soup, let's say, but a soup. And then a um, salad with some like um, onion-based kind of ratatouille and they do activated nuts and olives as well and vegetables and i halfway through i was really quite full the other people on the regime here tonight are having only broth tonight so that was their one meal on the fast day i'm going back to london so i'm not sure that i'll be able to do the equivalent of just a broth because though i was full halfway through my meal and continue to eat past the point of being full i that died away very quickly after eating and I'm now hungry again. It's about two hours after I had lunch and I could eat, like if someone offered me afternoon tea, I would want it. So the other thing I want to say is that the nutritionist here totally debunked the whole three meals and two snacks thing saying that it's absolute rubbish. Your body needs that break between meals um, and if you're constantly eating snacks, you're constantly sending insulin through your body and your body's having to go through that process. So just don't do that. Just three meals a day is what they really recommend here. So um, I am going to try to hold out until I get back to London. But um, before I leave, I'm going to have an abdominal massage. And this is a big part of the regime here. You have it every other day. The idea is that it's a diagnostic tool and also that they can sort of move things, you know, through your body manually. So I doubt I'll be able to film in the massage. Um, so I'm going to leave this vlog here and say that it's been a really good visit and um, I think the program's fantastic. There's a big focus on education which is obviously important. If you're doing any regime there's absolutely no point in doing it if you're just going to come back and and not carry on with it. So that's that's a really good part of it and also that you do feel genuinely rebalanced and rejuvenated based on looking after your gut a bit better. Thank you for watching and I'll see you soon.